be honest, I'm quite pressured lah, presenting after study. Like, uh, sorry for the whole schoolers, but I'm going back to slides. I, don't, I didn't program any game for this, but just back to good old fashioned slides. So today I'm here to share with you how to have fun and win at Code X3. So this is going to all the uh, student category and also the open category. I'm going to be sharing from personal experience in the previous two years of hackathons and what I took away from that. So, why do we want to take part in the hackathon? That's the first question I want to help you guys address. So if you look at this, this little graph of here, let me try to explain to you. So when you're in school, right, basically you learn a bit of theory and perhaps some of you uh, in poly, you do some projects <coughs> and you gain a bit of practice at the same time. But when you come to a hackathon, right, this is what happens to you. When you do a real world project and you start working on something real, you actually can gain a lot of experience using uh, doing gain a lot of practical um, uh, experience. And at the same time, you'll be able to improve your theory. And why is that so? Is because you know when you start building something, you start to learn you know that you don't know a lot of things that you don't know. And then uh, by exposing yourself to these sorts of experiences, you'll be able to then figure out new things to learn and improve your theory based on that. So let me now share with you like my past experiences at hackathons and what I've been doing. So I'll start off with my first hack in 2014. So this was the first time I took part in a hackathon. This was in my army days. So I took part in Code Extreme 2014 and we developed this uh, application called Blackbox. So Blackbox is essentially a crash detection device that informs uh, that informs emergency responders whenever you get into a crash. So basically we built a Raspberry Pi uh, with sensors and we attach this to a car. So based on the GPS signals, we are able to determine when you are met with an accident. And then we'll send a live stream of your coordinates and uh, what's happening inside the vehicle to emergency responders so they can get to you very quickly. So this was my team back then. Uh, and what what we what I actually got from this competition was, you know, to turn my mentality from you know, something that really, I, I didn't think it was possible to do such a thing before. But after I took part in this competition and I eventually won, uh, he actually taught me that, hey, a lot of things, right, when it comes to creating something, thinking of the idea and actually bring it to execution, uh, it really gives you that kind of confidence that, hey, you can take on a problem and try to solve it. And, of course, uh, with a lot of hard work. So I'll be sharing with you more. So uh, we also won the data prize uh, by, by making use of uh, analytics to show uh, some statistics like what's the heat map of accidents around Singapore. We did some trend analysis of response times. So this is really to provide value add to those people using our application. And then in the next year, in 2015, last year, there was this uh, big hackathon uh, due to SG50 and I came back again with a different team. And this time I thought, okay, let's up level a bit. Right, so I, uh, we built this app called Epicenter. And essentially what it does is that it tells people that we can fight epidemics. So the inspiration behind this idea came when I was supposed to go to Korea during this hackathon season and it didn't actually happen because uh, that back then there was MERS that, MERS that was going on in Korea and we realized that uh, the healthcare professionals realized that if they were able to quarantine people and sort of trace the contacts, those people that people who, uh, those people who had the disease were in contact with, they would be able to cut down this a lot more. So we actually used Wi-Fi signals from our phone to triangulate your movement within buildings and we sort of simulated the, the interactions between individuals and tried to predict what is the, the spread of the virus within organizations. So you can see here we did some simulation. Yeah. We did some simulation and also we showed the, the progression of the disease across time. So the what this what I took away from this experience was that really if there is anything that you need, you can actually ask. So what we did was I realized that uh, this simulation really wouldn't be meaningful if we didn't have real data to work with. So I actually went to one of the research labs in SMU, called SMU Life Labs, and we actually got real data that they're collecting within SMU. So whatever simulation that we did over here, it was one of the most exciting moments in my hackathon journey that I could actually see, you know, make predictions based on things that were actually happening. So this was what I built the second year. Uh, and also, in order to provide a more realistic modeling of, of, of the viral spread, the, the, the model of the viral spreading, the virus spreading, I also went to ask a doctor, you know, what are the characteristics of the viruses? So like parameters like you know your incubation period, 
whether the, the virulence of the disease and so on and so forth. So we actually factor this to our model. So again, the moral of the story is, if you need help, be, don't be shy to go out and ask. Like, I think this year's theme is FinTech. So uh, it's an area that not a lot of us are very familiar with. So um, if you have the chance to go and speak to people who have been in this industry, I think that will help you a lot in coming up with a solution that is realistic. Okay, so uh, very quickly, I just want to go through some tips, okay, and, on, and how to gear up for that win. Right, so there are three phases to every competition. So currently, we are in this phase of the preparation. And then later on, I'll be sharing about hack, the hacking part, and also the pitching. So preparation is very important. So there are a few things that we can do from now until uh, July, right? So uh, in terms of getting out, getting ready our ideas, the skills, and also the team that is good, uh, that is going to go for this competition. So in terms of ideas, right, the first tip that I have to share is that we have to read the news and be sort of familiar with the trends in the industry now. So things like buzzwords or certain technologies uh, that have been released recently that would help us to sort of shape the possibilities that we are able to do. Uh, reading about banks, what banks have been saying recently, what are the challenges that they face, that is also very helpful to give you an idea of where uh, the fintech industry is going in general. And also, yeah, new technologies like chatbots. Uh, some resources that I found useful are like websites like uh, Datalist. So here you are able to look at a lot of startups uh, all over the world and you see the ideas that they have, people have been coming up with. And uh, I've read a saying somewhere that, you know, when every startup dies, they leave behind certain randoms of an idea. And these are the ideas that you guys can use to improve on and basically put together an even better version of uh, uh, a startup idea. Right? And Product Hunt is another very useful tool that I've used to keep track of the development in this space. So if you guys want to take it down. Okay, next I was talking about allocation of skills. So from my experiences uh, in the hackathon, what I learned was that you know, there are basically three categories of skills that you need to gain. So first of which is the back-end technologies. So uh, basically, someone in your group has to be good at uh, working with databases, setting up application servers, uh, perhaps working with frameworks, or even learning how to code certain algorithms to you know, sum the amount of money, predict uh, how money is going to grow in the future, stuff like that. Uh, the next one, also very important is the APIs. I call it APIs++. Plus plus. Why? Because you are sort of the generalist of the group. You have to be the person going out there to shop for technology. So uh, as mentioned just now, there are a lot of APIs out there that can simplify how we code our applications. So someone really needs to go out there and start looking and start experimenting with them. So one of the ways that really helped me was building toy projects. So uh, do start building something early if you need to get API keys and get a request for it early, as early as possible. And lastly, the person who sort of puts it all together is your front-end developer. He will actually create the interface for your application. So you need to, again, I would say that go build a toy project so that as a team, when you come together, right, you come together as a unified uh, group. So you don't sort of struggle with putting your parts together, together at the end. So I would suggest to come together and build something small first. Uh, perhaps you could build a simple expense tracker or fit to bank app. So while that might seem simple, but that actually helps you to solidify the dynamics of the group so that during the 24-hour competition, when time is very precious, you could you know, flow a lot easier. All right, so uh, a little quote here that I had. So having the right people and the right chemistry is more important than getting the right ideas. So I, this is something I really believe in. So ideas are very fluid at the start. So when you actually bounce it off different people, you can uh, build on each other's ideas to come up with something very interesting. So I would suggest get people from different walks of life, the people in different industries, so that you can come up with more interesting ideas. <coughs> okay, hack phase. Quickly, a few tips. So first tip is validate your idea. So you know Singaporeans, right, we tend to be very kiasu. You know, so uh, I, I say that because I've been like that before. So at hackathons, right, when other groups come and ask me, hey, what are you going to build? So I will tell them, I'll tell them a little bit, lah, you know. But you know the trump card, I'll keep it to myself, I won't tell anybody. Because I'll be afraid that they steal my idea, right? I'm sure some of you still have that fear uh, when, when, you, when you eventually go for the competition. So what I'm trying to say here is that, uh, trust me on this, that uh, this hush-hush strategy will not be a good filming strategy. Because the only way the ideas can improve and get polished <laughs> is when they are challenged. So I really recommend that when you are working um, when you're in the hackathon and you're working beside other groups, try to sell your idea to them and see what feedback they have and 
which feedback can help you to basically maybe it can help you see certain blind sides that you didn't see and you can improve them before the pitch. So of course, what are the most important people that you have to sort of try to test your idea with? Right? So of course that will be the judges. So the judges, right, during a competition, they'll be walking around a lot. So if you grab them very quickly and just tell them your idea and see what their initial reactions, what are their concerns, and that will help you to better address it as you begin to build the prototype. <coughs> okay, then create a fully functioning product experience. Okay, here I say experience, not a prototype, because you really want to let your users sort of have a feel of how your entire app fits into their life. So a few concrete tips, right? In a in a shortage of time, right? You really need to build the most important things first. You know, don't bother building login screens because this is such a generic thing that you can just copy and paste online. So build your important screens first. Don't code what you cannot show off. So a lot of technical people, right? They tend to code very uh, difficult algorithms behind the scenes, but in the end, they don't really show it or they don't really sell it. So that's not very helpful when it comes to a composition like that, twenty four hours a week. Uh, adding on to that point, if you don't have time to build something. Uh, do a mock-up and then explain to the judges that hey, this is a mock-up, but at least it will compromise on the how they understand what this has, what this app is supposed to do. Okay, and uh, make it visually appealing. So you want to be professional about it. So uh, I I will say I will say that you try not to use bootstrap. Uh, whoever is familiar with bootstrap, right? Um, very stock looking and, and it's not going to impress anyone if you want to win. Right, judges. So uh, there are a lot of okay, but at the same time there are a lot of tools out there that you can use. So uh, if you are doing web development, you can look into material design. Look at uh, look at websites that give you uh, components like Bootsnip. Bootsnip.com gives you certain components built on top of Bootstrap. Or you could even look at CodePen. This is a, a website that I find very useful. You can just search for for any kind of component that you need. You can actually use the code and just modify the code. We don't, help you build we don't recommend GitHub. Sorry. GitHub. GitHub. Uh, we recommend. We don't recommend. Um. Okay. So GitHub is a place. Uh, it's an open source sort of uh, ecosystem where a lot of people post free code. So, again, uh, some of these uh, components, right? They actually link to their GitHub accounts. So you might actually want to go and follow uh, that. And I think the the state of web development, even mobile development nowadays, is that there are a lot of ready made components that you can in uh, source out. So this is really what you can do during the preparation phase, even though you don't have an idea yet, but sourcing these components will really help you to shape you know, what is possible, what can I possibly do in one in 24 hours. Yeah, so, uh, and last one, remember to have fun and sleep. Okay, for this, I want to share a very quick story. So I was in Facebook uh, HQ last year. I was representing Singapore at the finals. And very interestingly, right, at Facebook Hackathon, you know this was the finals, everyone coming from the, all over the world to compete for their country. And then very interestingly, they have their own, uh, during the Hackathon itself, right, the, face, the people at Facebook started taking out like, you know, hula hoops and like, stuff to juggle and they say, okay, we're having a very quick 10 minute tutorial on how to do hula hoops, you know, that kind of thing. <laughs> and, and they also opened up their arcade for us to sort of go and play with. But guess what I was doing? You know, Singaporean, <laughs> very kiasu, right? I was just at my computer like coding and stuff. It was a really something that I regretted. So I would encourage you like during this hackathon, right, try not to forget that this is also a space where you can make new friends, make new contacts and try to figure out, you know, uh, try to learn about what other people are doing as well. Okay, last one, last one, I promise you, last one. So pitch phase, why this matters? Because it is not the most technical idea, but it's the idea that judges most resonate with. So your job when you pitch, right, is to make sure your idea resonates with the judges. So how do you do that? So firstly, right, you want to give a good pitch, right? You learn from Steve Jobs, right? You rehearse, you rehearse, and you rehearse. Okay? And one strategy that I always use, right, or one strategy that most people use, or I used to use, is to say, uh, okay, competition ends at 12 o'clock. Let's stop at 10 o'clock, and we spend the last two hours trying to do a demo. And what I realized from experience, right, is that this is the worst strategy you can use. Because at the last two hours, right, you realize that, hey, I want to, to show this thing, but I haven't got it built out yet. Or like, you know, uh, sort of there's a missing gap in our functionality that isn't built yet. And you sort of end up forcing things together. So my suggestion is that, prepare your demo incrementally. So every three hours, meet up as a group, start going through your demo and say, okay, these are the things I want to show. For the next three hours, we want to show this feature and go ahead and build that feature. So that will really help to really tear up your presentation uh, for that pitch at the end of 24 hours. Okay, uh, so for those of you who haven't given pitches before, uh, you really need to explain why. So just a very quick template. 
So most people would, would do the first for part A to part B really well, you know, problem, solution, target audience, all that. But a lot of people forget to highlight the benefits. So that's very important. So you don't just show, okay, my, my app can do this, my app can do that. Tell them how it benefits the user. Why would someone want to use your application? Right? And then the last, my last piece of advice is uh, similar to the idea you want to validate. So use the, the people around you, you know, test your ideas on them. Ask them, you know, what worked for them in the pitch, and what are things that were not clear, so they can really refine it for the final presentation. And of course, hopefully, you can give a good presentation at the end. All right. So all the best for your competition uh, in July. Uh, and thanks, thanks for listening to me, and uh, I'm happy to any questions. Clarence, so thank you very much, Clarence, for that. He basically summarized what we have been trying to do for 10 years. Yeah. Right? So it's a fantastic presentation. You can steal your stuff, right? So any questions for Clarence or for Sally? Anybody? Are you taking part this year? <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> Am I allowed to? Well, of course, anybody's allowed to. Yes, he's looking for teammates. Yeah, he's looking for teammates. Yeah, apply with this email account. Connect up with him. Celine, are you taking part this year? Yes, she is going to be taking part this year as well. Do you have anybody younger to join you? Trying to get someone. A three-year-old, some three-year-old. Three-year-old. All right. So, uh, thank you very much, Clarence. Thank you very much. Uh, I think this has been a, a very useful session, I hope, especially for those of you who are sitting there looking kind of wondering what are you doing here, and for the young man in the kind of like uh, yellowish uh, t shirt, something is this relevant for me? Um, I, I certainly hope it is relevant for you uh, because you know the rest of Singapore depends on all of you guys to make us bring forward for the next 50 years. So, let's make sure that we can actually succeed somewhere along the way and thank you very much for to all of you for coming here today and as you know the dates are has been posted we'll be opening up the registration on 2nd may competition is in july and training is going to be there so please come for the training you don't have to come for every session but at least come for one session so with that and on behalf of the organizing committee thank you very much for coming here and we'll see you soon all right thank you